Hi everyone, it's Cindy from Cindy's Art. Today, let's have some fun. We're gonna use some acrylic ink and watercolor paints to create this spring lesson. This is very loose, and I've listed the brand and the colors of the acrylic inks, plus the Daniel Smith watercolor paints that I've used in this painting. And when you do this type of painting, my paper is dry right now and I've used a little bit of those acrylic inks and you can see I've got some large blotches. I've sketched out just uh, roughly the angles that I wanted for where I wanted the inks and, um, and I have thought ahead of time like, okay, I'm gonna place water above this. I'm gonna barely touch that ink because I wanna start to draw it up. When I place water on here, um, the paint will run to where the water is. That's why it's running upwards. And then I am just pulling up that paint a little more uh, by one, dabbing that wet brush down into where the horizon line is. I'm not working with the entire paper, just the horizon paper. Um, I wanna control this spread a little bit. So I didn't go crazy, um, but when I wanted more ink, I went over and I used the dropper of that bottled ink and I added a tiny, tiny bit more of that ink in there. So I would recommend um, that when you do this, have your paper dry and then think of zigzags. Take a look at other people's paintings and how they did a composition in it and uh, just decide how to do it. I told myself hairpins that sometimes like the corner on the left looks like a hairpin to me. Um, so I did horizon line at the top, then I did a, a hairpin um, like it was spread out and the tips are spread out to the right. And then I work with the horizon line first. And once I get that flowing and looking kind of cool, then I go down into my other areas the, to the foreground. And I decided uh, to touch the ink um, underneath of those. The horizon line, I wanted the ink to flow upwards. The other lines, the hairpin, I wanted it to flow beneath them. So once I got that set, it starts to flow. I'm playing with this at this point. Right now that is a Daniel Smith green gold that's going into, um, into those trees. The paper is still wet. It's not sopping wet, but there's times where I turn my paper and you can see it is kind of shiny. So that's good. Now this one inch wide brush that I'm using, um, what I'm doing is trying to get a little bit of water on there. Then I'm lightly touching that ink in there and I want it to run, but I don't want it to run massively. So I'm using a smaller amount of application. These droppers are great, but what I use also are um, either sticks, of all things, guys. I dip a stick in there to get a little bit of paint on it, and then I'll dab it on the same lines that I've already created um, in there. It'll just cause the paint to run. So at this point, I'm playing. That's all I'm doing, I'm playing. I'm adding a tiny bit of water, a tiny bit of paint. Uh, the, right now, I'm adding a little bit of a yellow in there. I can see that. An Aurelion yellow is what I would add in. Um, and it's gonna help make that area look a little bit more oh, brighter. That would be a good way to put it. Um, so there's my Daniel Smith um, palette. Uh, so while this is wet, my acrylic ink is going to stay put. And the only thing that's going to really change if I've got water on here is if I dab paint towards the bottom part of the horizon. Watch to see what I'm doing because I am dabbing that paintbrush at the bottom. And why? Because I know that the water on the top is going to pull that paint upwards. Uh, so practice it. it. It's a lot of fun. So I'm going to go ahead and keep playing with this for a moment and you can just watch it. Uh, but this is a lot of fun and I like the effects. You know I'm not much of an abstract painter, uh, but I make myself do different things because we constantly are learning and we need to get outside our, the box of things. Um, the other thing I'm going to say before I give you a second here is I'm adding a lot of dark where this light area is. This is where I want the eye to go. 
And so I concentrated um, the light and the dark, the strongest in that tree line where you could see that teal tree and you've got these bright lights that are coming in through. So let me let you watch for a minute and then I'll come back on and wrap it up. At this point, I'm gonna use the color neutral. And this is, I know this is my Holbein paint that I'm using on this one. Uh, but I'm looking at the painting and I'm asking myself, how do I wanna finish this up? What do I need? And I will take a neutral color like this and I'm just gonna define a little bit. I'm just gonna ask myself, what am I seeing? And in this area that I'm painting right now, I'm seeing rocks, that's what I'm seeing and I'm making sure that I don't get into too much heavy detail because I, I do that. I'm telling myself, keep it light, only do a little bit, scratch it on. So I'm gonna finish this up adding a little bit of color, a little bit of neutral, and I am so thankful that you guys are with me today. Um, I'd love to hear how your painting uh, look comes out. Make sure that you hit subscribe and hit the bell or hit the like. Uh, so you can let me know that you appreciated this. Give me a comment so I can hear your feedback. But it's always good to be with you guys. I hope you're having a good Christmas and New Year's. And we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.